Hello everyone, Lawrence here with another video. In this one, we're looking at this direct mount interactive power meter smart trainer, the Elite Doretto. This is a more, I would say budget oriented because it's not as expensive as the more high end stuff, but it's still quite expensive, especially given that you'll need some extra stuff to go with it, which is something I'll discuss later on in this video. First up, what do you get in this very strong box? I mean, this is 90 kilograms of human sitting on an empty box. So it's very strong. I'll probably arrive perfectly fine if you order online. What is in it is pretty much just the trainer and a little piece to put your front wheel in. Now, it comes with a lot of adapters, um, so you can mount this on quick releases or bull through axles, no matter what the width, but it doesn't do boost. So if, like me, you ride mountain bikes, boost mountain bikes it won't fit on this thing unless you get special adapters again, which will add up to the price once more. Another thing, I just wouldn't really recommend using it with a mountain bike, especially a full suspension one, because that's 300 PSI in the rear shock and it's locked out completely and you can still feel it bolt a little bit when you put out a lot of power, so probably get a hardtail or a road bike to go with it and it'll be a lot easier. Now, talking about stuff to go with it, as I said, you need a proper bike and while it is easy to move this thing around, to fold the legs in, all that sort of stuff, I really would recommend getting a dedicated bike for use with your home trainer. For a few reasons. First of all, it's direct mount. So the cassette will be in a different position than it will be on your wheel. It's not much, but the difference is definitely there. And with this one, you will have to re-index your rear derailleur because of that, because the cassette will be slightly more over to the left or to the right. Um, so it's not that easy to just drop a bike in uh, train, put a wheel in, go right outside again. So you should really get a dedicated bike for this, which again adds to the price. Other stuff that adds to the price, well, it doesn't come with a cassette, so you'll need to go and buy a cassette, and you'll also need to go and buy an Ant Plus dongle. Now, granted, the Doretto does support Bluetooth, so you can use your phone with, for example, the Zwift companion app if you're going to be training with Zwift. You can use that. But I found that it's not as responsive over Bluetooth because it's first over a Wi-Fi to your phone and from your phone over Bluetooth. You can't go straight to your computer over Bluetooth for whatever reason. So it's not ideal. You'll need a dedicated Ant Plus dongle, especially because you'll be riding with a heart rate monitor anyway. Now, this thing has a bunch of sensors in it. One of them is cadence. And again, this is something I found you'll have to buy extra so a cadence sensor. I have one mounted on my left crank because I found that the integrated cadence sensor just isn't good enough and when you're using the, the trainer in a normal mode on Zwift for example what will happen is it'll be slow to respond and then you just get stuck. It'll just bog you down to the point where you just have to stop and then start up again. So the things you'll need first of all a bike and plus dongle and probably a cadence sensor. That's what I would get. Now, then there's the next bit. So do you use it with your computer, like what I'm doing right here, or do you use it with a tablet or a phone? Personally, while the training is probably the same effect, no matter if you're doing this on a cinema screen or on your, on your phone, I just find it more intuitive and more immersive when you're using a bigger screen. So I'm using uh, 23 inch monitors, uh, and I also have a TV over there, but I haven't really gotten around to hooking that one up yet. But a bigger screen is definitely better. And you also need more stuff, like for example, a table to put everything on. So the shopping list is much more than just the 650 euros or so that this Elite Diretto trainer costs. Anyway, costs out of the way, what is the trainer itself like? Well, first of all, it's very... I wouldn't say difficult to install because it's definitely an easy thing to install, but there are not really any instructions. So I went with the picture on the box to find out which one of the legs goes where. It's just a really stupid thing. There's basically no instructions available. Uh, and then because I was suffering with that cadence sensor not responding all that well, I was looking online for software manuals, really hard to find. And apparently there's just no software for this thing. So you can't calibrate it if you have you know, like calibrated power pedals, for example, you can't calibrate this thing to match with those pedals, for example. So um, it's in theory, plug and play. In practice, there's a bit more stuff that comes to it. For example, the power cable. So it comes with 
a adapter, an adapter for power, and the cable on it is so ridiculously short that you'll need an extension cable. Again, adding up to the price and the complexity of just setting it up and riding. So what that means is, effectively, you'll need a dedicated computer and screens to go with it. I first was running this on my main system, my main computer. I'm a computer guy, so I have a bunch of parts laying around. But I was using this on my main PC. And what I found is I was sweating, sweat was dripping from my nose, I was breathing, and so I was just blowing my sweat onto my really expensive um, displays on my main PC. So I threw some old bits together, made a little setup here. And you really need a dedicated setup. You can move it around all the time. It's just, it's too much work and it'll get old really quickly when you just want to ride, shower, and do some work. Um, that said though, this thing is really efficient at training. So right now you can see a little bit of sunshine. It's probably the first sunshine we've had in two months here in Belgium. Um, so what that means is I'm training on this thing every single day for the last, what is it, 10 weeks that I'm now into a Zwift training program. That's daily training and the results from training on an indoor trainer are massive. Well, we, we even get more sun. I should have said that sooner. Great, we have sun. I might go outside and ride my bike now. But um, yeah, the training impact of just structured training on this thing using whatever software you want to use. I personally really like to use Zwift because it's, as I said, a bit more immersive. It's obviously not real, but whatever. Um, I really like Zwift for this. And my FTP, when I first got this thing, I did a, an FTP test right away. I was at 400 and, uh, 400, 243 watts, which is quite pathetic, I know, but yeah, whatever. Six weeks later into the training, I was already at 286. And I think right now, I haven't done a test again, I'll do one in two weeks when I do a cyclocross race. Um, I, I think I'm pretty much over 300 already. So the training aspect of this thing is awesome if you have the full on setup. So then let's talk about what it's actually like to ride this thing, because as I said, I've ridden this thing for 10 weeks non-stop, pretty much. First up, um, if you're just seated, it feels very natural. Um, it's not the fastest responding thing, um, especially when Zwift, for example, throws in the ERG mode, which is a mode that will set the wattage and the power to the trainer and you don't have to touch anything. It's brilliant, but it takes about four seconds for um, the trainer to add resistance or lower resistance. So that's definitely something to keep in mind, but overall it feels quite natural. Um, so it, it does really well there, despite having like a virtual flywheel, not a real flywheel and all that stuff. I'm not gonna go into the technical aspect. I just wanna tell you guys whether or not it's good. And I, I really think it's good. It's also pretty stiff. What that means is that up and down is perfectly fine. Um, left to right is okay. But, as you'll see, when you get up out of the pedals, it's the most unnatural thing ever. You're up, you know, upright, um, standing on the pedals, you're trying to use your arms to put out even more power, and the bike doesn't move. I mean, it moves, but it doesn't move in a natural way. So, perhaps that's where the way more expensive smart trainers come into play. This one, though, is good enough for most people, and especially given the price, it's only 650 euros. I think it's it's really good for training. Now, anyway, I'm sitting on this box that has a bunch of logos on it, and it also mentions a few things. So, first of all, it'll go up to 40 kilometers an hour. Now, obviously, you're standing still, so what does that exactly mean? I think it's, it means the relative speed of, if you had like a 700c wheel in the back, the speed at which that thing would rotate would be similar to 40 kilometers an hour. It doesn't really matter all that much. I have it here on my mountain bike and I just have it in a 22 in the front and in a 12 at the rear and I never shift um, because I'm always in this ERG mode with Zwift training. Now when you do shift, it can get a little bit slow so you will definitely need a good cadence sensor to go with it to have everything react faster because if you start slamming through the gears, so like two, three, four shifts at a time, it will get confused and everything will go wrong. So um, one shift at a time tops and don't shift too often. I just, I haven't shifted this bike in probably 10 weeks because it's pointless to do so when you have Zwift's ERG backing you up. It also says it can do up to 1400 watts and this is perhaps a bit of a problem with 
Uh, people who want to use this for sprint training, I mean, 1400 watts is really easy to get. I mean, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but if I put out a lot of power, I'm well over 1400 watts right away. Um, so that's a bit annoying, uh, especially because this one seems to top out at 1200 watts. And if you go well, 1269 watts, so if I go over that, there's just no more resistance whatsoever. So yeah, if you're like a sprinter training on this thing, it's not ideal because standing upright doesn't really work and you can't put out a lot of power. What is really good though, is the accuracy. So it's 2%, so it'll read 2% lower, 2% high tops. At 1400 watts, that's about 28 watts that it'll read low or read high. Negligible in my opinion, uh, especially because most of the time you're not really going over 400 watts anyway. So very accurate, which really helps with the training effect. And it means you can do a lot of really well aimed training, very structured training, and everything will go really well. And as a result of that, I got really good fitness gains. So then to conclude, should you buy this thing? In my opinion, yes. If you have first up a window so you can get fresh air in, you need fans, you need a bike, but if you have all that other stuff, if the money isn't really a problem and you can afford to get, all, get everything in there and dedicate some space in your house to this indoor trainer, I think it's a no-brainer. The training effect doesn't lie. I got way fitter using this thing than I would have with just doing my normal rides. And I know this because two years ago I was riding my bike every single day for 50, 60 kilometers at least every day. Now I ride for an hour to an hour and a half every day and I'm way fitter now than I was doing outdoor training just cruising along. And it's just a massive time saver in general. There's no bike you need to clean when it's raining and muddy outside and all that stuff. You just get off, wipe the sweat off and off you go to the shower and enjoy the rest of your evening after work for example. So I would definitely recommend getting this. I think the price is very good but it could come with more accessories. Um, the usability is good if you have a dedicated setup. Anyway, I've been rambling for long enough. I'm sorry this video isn't as structured as my training plan, but thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video, please press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to PewDiePie, and thank you all very much for watching.